You said, well, remember when we first met, you told me and my husband that you wanted to own your own business. I said, absolutely. She said, I'm in a position now that I can make that dream come true. And she said, um, I need you to move to Michigan. I said, with all due respect, I'm honored, but I don't move for jobs. She said, shut your mouth. She said, I didn't say move for a job. Owner, I can make you an owner. Next thing you know, I get a call from a bank. And next thing you know, they wired me. They gave me a letter saying they needed my routing number. They're going to wire me $3 million so I can purchase two McDonald franchises. But up, 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 up. I'm loving it. Most things are not taught, they're caught. We have to follow the right people. And then we had to put our we had to put our children in an environment that they can follow the right people. So if we could see it, then we can create it for ourselves. So how did you get into um, the McDonald's franchises? How did that start? That's a, that's the million dollar question right there. So again, if you know, step by step, day by day, building the block. So. After I was free, I see, you know, guess what? So at first Mary fired me, but then when my mind got renewed, she didn't free me. She, she didn't, she didn't fire me. She freed me. Yes. So I can walk into my destiny. Does that make sense? So after that, after getting freed, I locked myself into my apartment for about a month and a good friend of mine, the Bible says iron sharpers, iron is one man to another. A friend of mine kept calling me. I wouldn't answer the phone. I wouldn't answer the phone. So he came and said, look, get up. Yeah. So I'm taking you to a minority job fair. I went to a minority job fair, didn't want to go, but still still wanted to soak a little bit, figure this out. But I went, got dressed up, suited and booted. And uh, Wendy's International was there, Wendy's. And I gave my resume. And they offered me they offered me like almost eight thousand dollars more than I made on my other job. So look, I got fired, but I got a raise. Woo! Come on, yeah. somebody. <laughs> I can't make this up. A person last week told me, a grown person last week, I'm not laughing at them. A grown person last week told me that they grown, they are over, I'm not going to say they title, but their boss gave them a quarter raise and they grown. So it's the, the, many other plans are the man's heart. See, I would have been in that trap, but when I yielded, surrendered and let it go and flow, I wound up getting a, a, a raise. So I went to Wendy's, and, but then I went into it with a different mindset though. I got to say this. So then, because after you get freed, then you understand that you ain't controlling nothing. So you don't look at like a job is going to make me and all that. So I said, I had to flip the script. I said, everybody else call it a job, but to me, it's not a job. It's a paid internship. It's a place that you, you learn, you earn, then you move on. Well, most people go there and change dollars for hours. They job make them, it gives them their confidence, their pride and all this. Yes. No, one person come and bust that bubble, then you deflate it. But when you look at it as this is an opportunity for me to go and learn, earn, add value and move on. And I went into it with that mindset. So I went to Wendy's. I said, when, I, when they gave me the job, guess what? I knew I was going to be there for only six months. Stayed there six months. I was the best employee they ever saw. Then I got recruited by another company. And then, as, then I started getting recruited because the word started traveling. And... Uh, one day I'm working at another job, a paid internship, and I was, I was selling food to restaurants. And I walk into the restaurant and it was brand new being erected. And, and the gentleman was, um, the owner was there and I was trying to show him my food. And he said, sir, no disrespect, young man. He said, but I don't need food. I got food right now. I need people. If you can give me some people, that's going to help me out. Listen to what he told me. He told me this. Now I went home. I'm like, bro, I, don't, I ain't got time for that. But my wife sat me down. I told her, I said, guess what? That restaurant over there, that joker going to ask me to come in there and, and he need people. I'm trying to sell him food. She said, wait a minute. She said, aren't you going to own your own restaurant one day? I said, yes. She said, um, have you ever worked in, in there? I said, no. She said, remember, you always say you can't be what you can't see. So I got convicted. And that's another life, life lesson is that you got to surround yourself with people who will tell you the truth and love. That's good. Mm -hmm. So she, and, I, and I was open to it. I went back over there and I took a job in that man's restaurant as a server. And the Bible says, don't miss this, to be truly great, you must first serve others. Woo, come on somebody. And so I had never served tables before, but I was in the food service industry. So I was over there serving tables and I did that for a year, part time. And I, we, was, we were trying to save money to build a house. And so long story short, one day, um, uh, an African American couple came, and I and they they sat in my section, and they were very the, the husband was very engaged. He asked me questions. Something different about you, young man. You know, you don't like like a server. He's come every Friday on a date, so we became not friends but very cordial. He asked me questions, 
And his wife was sitting there and she never said a word to me. I didn't think she cared for me, but he was, she was listening. And what I found out is most leaders don't do a lot of talking. They do, they're good, they're great listeners. So she was listening. And I told him I went to Omaha restaurant one, one day. I told him I was just here learning and adding value. And he was just encouraging me. And every week when they came, now fast forward, one day living in Chicago and uh, me and a buddy of mine started, said we're gonna start a company called Food Service Solutions. We didn't have paperwork, we didn't have an LLC or nothing. We just said, you know, we, we, we're gonna be consultants. And we said, we wanna get some big clients. So I had the idea to look in the Chicago Tribune in the Help Wanted ad. That's how mine work. I said, so if somebody looking at Help Wanted, they need help, so we'll tell them, get rid of the ad and hire us as consultants. And I talk, gave my friend this great idea and he didn't wanna go. So I took the, I saw an article in the, in the Chicago Tribune said, come meet McDonald's upper management. I tore the article out, put it in my briefcase, got suited up and went to Oak Brook, Illinois to their world corporate headquarters to tell them to hire my company as a consultant, the company I didn't even have. Come on somebody. So when I got there, it was a job fair. So I opened my briefcase up and I read the fine print. It said, come meet McDonald's management, upper management at a job fair. All I saw was upper management. All I saw was opportunity. But then when I got there, I'm already in the building. So I started going through, picking up information. And that's when I found out that McDonald's was this global company. They got a real estate department, a marketing, all this. And so my, my whole vision of McDonald's grew. Little did I know what was going to happen next. So we had to go and sit through this presentation with the vice presidents on the stage. It was three Caucasian men and one African-American lady. And the Bible says, be careful because you might be entertaining angels unaware. That's somewhere in Hebrew, somewhere, sitting there like Prego. Come on, somebody. And so remember in the restaurant, the lady and the man that I was serving? Remember the man who was engaging and the wife wasn't talking to me? She was at McDonald's corporate headquarters, not just there. She was a vice president. Wow. She saw me and she shook my hand and she called Jack Greenberg, who was the CEO of McDonald's over. And she said, this gentleman right there. Now, she didn't know I was born to teenage parents. She didn't know I was a 50 10 times because I wasn't wearing those clothes. That makes sense? And so she said, we need to have them on our team. She said, me and my husband went to this restaurant for the last year and he served us. She said, the way that he made us feel, his passion, his vision, I want every customer in McDonald's to feel the way that we felt. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm meeting with them. They paid, they gave me an opportunity to be, now listen to me, I go, I'm a server. Leapfrogged, the meeting we had, they paid me $80,000, gave me a company car expense account. No back, they, they didn't check my back, no, no kind of, about my background, about, you know, being born and all that, all that stuff, they just, hey, what she saw, she believed it and saw it. And she really risked her whole career. And I came in as a consultant over four stores. I had never worked behind a counter of McDonald's in my life. And here I am, got the audacity to be a, a, a supervisor of, I had maybe 800 staff, had four stores. We were doing almost like $20 million in revenue. Um, I was in over my head, you know what I'm saying? But I, but I just became a subject matter expert. So after I did that for a year, uh, my name started to ring and she got promoted from Chicago to Michigan. And she, I got a call one day and said, Ken, um, Edie wants to talk to you. And I was like, for what? She's enough. She had gone. I was, I was, I, to be honest, I was planning my exit from McDonald's. I was going to open my own Ken's hot dog stands. Many other plans of the man's heart, but low people would fail. And so she called me then and said, um, you know, I just really appreciate the things you've done for the company. He said, when, when we first met, you told me and my husband that you wanted to own your own business. I said, absolutely. She said, I'm in a position now that I can make that dream come true. And she said, um, I need you to move to Michigan. And I said, I, I said, with all due respect, I'm honored, but I don't move for jobs. She said, shut your mouth. She said, I didn't say move for a job. She said, owner, I can make you an owner. Next thing you know, I get a call from a bank called Fleet Bank of Boston. Uh, they ran my credit. My credit was good. And next thing you know, they wired me. They gave me a letter saying they needed my routing number. They're going to wire me $3 million so I can purchase two McDonald's franchises. But uh, but, but, but I'm loving it. <laughs> That's how it happened, just step by step right there. Wow. wow. Yes. Wow. When you were talking, it made me think about when you said you saw your dad yep, building a house. 
And so now, <laughs> you know, now, you know, I build a business. I think we live in a society, especially with social media, where, um, and you know, I'm millennial, an older one, but I'm a millennial. I think we see influencers, we see them become rich over just posting a video or something. I think we're, you know, we're in the microwave society where we feel like, Things should just come to us and and a lot of us don't really have the principles of building something that oh, wow. that takes time sometimes and effort it's not just posting a photo and that's that um so it's just i'm just listening to your story and wow just the connection from what god allowed you to see even as a child and how that ended up helping you with that is um, awesome. it's real wow. think about it. and, most, and i hope people listening to this understand that that if you have anyone who looks up to you they don't have to see, they don't even, my next door neighbor, Mr. Mr. Faulkner, he had nine kids, you know, but he was an alcoholic, but you know what I took away from him? I looked past the alcohol because that man provided very well for his family. I saw that man get up every day, get in his car at four o'clock in the morning, go to a job. He came home every night. He wasn't jumping at other women's bed. So well, you never know who's watching you. And what I find, what we find is that most things are not taught, they're caught. My parents didn't sit us down and have a master class with us. They just did certain things and we caught them doing them and we wrote, so people role model. So that's what we got to do a better job as a people, especially is we have to follow the right people. And then we got to put our, we have to put our children in an environment that they can follow the right people. That makes sense because you got to see it. You don't have to be the smartest, the richest, but God created us that we're creators instinctively. So if we could see it, then we can create it for ourselves. And so most people don't get the opportunity to, like I'm gonna tell you right now, my, my mind is just always blown that it's grown people who not had experiences. And then when you when you talk to them and you see and you see the depth and breadth of the conversation, you could tell that they, they only lived in a certain sphere, they only got certain influences and nothing different with us. But the only difference in me and our family, my, my brothers, is that we just got exposure. And exposure, I'm telling you, exposure and environment relates to freedom and courage. I mean, current it does. It's relatable. So, yes, yeah, good stuff. I love that. And I love the divine connection that happened. Like, you had, you did everything right. You, you know, anything you did, you did it to the best of your ability. And you made the impression. And then God allowed that divine connection to happen. And I think yeah. that's that's such a testament to anybody who's watching, you know, not to be discouraged. If you're, you know, keep working your craft right. Keep doing what the Lord's called you to do. And I believe he'll put those right people in your path. The Bible says one man plant, one man water, but God get the increase. Yes. That's a principle. Yes. And so our job, you just keep planting, keep planting seeds, but then God waters it. Then you get the increase. That's some good stuff. But I do have a question. What's kind of a, a misconception people may have about people who own franchises? Some people, I think, think, okay, you just, someone gives you money, you yeah. you own it, but you don't really have to get involved with it. Like, what 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 is that really like, that day-to-day? -day, um... uh, that, that's a great question. I'm just being totally transparent with you. It's almost like, uh, it's this, someone, I was at a, a training one day, and they gave us this, this comparison. This may be, you know, I know it might be off by a few. But I believe there, like when you're growing up, most men or most men, boys have a, a dream of being a professional athlete, right? Say NBA, going to the NBA, NFL, right? You talk to them, right? So there's only 200 and maybe 85 players in the NBA. I think something like that. Maybe 300 right now, maybe. You do the math, right? So it's like maybe 300, maybe it's 350 players in the NBA but it's on like 200 and maybe 25 McDonald franchisees. So from that perspective, it's, it's a very unique, yes. And so people look at you, if you become a franchisee, like you a professional athlete, like you're just rich. Yeah. And that's not the case because some, because you have to have multiple franchises to really make good money. The average, just to let you know from a, from behind the curtain, it's a business. You got to build it. It's just a proven system, but you still got to work and build it, right? The average P and L for a franchise, and McDonald's is the highest, right? Biggest. The GNA, the general and administrative, it only it only accounts for the owner to take fifty thousand dollars out, or you're going to overextend your business. Now, if you increase sales, like I did, I, I increase sales, so I'm taking two hundred thousand, but my sales are a million dollars more than the average McDonald's store. I understand business. Right. 
So that's the first mistake is that people think just because they own a franchise that you're automatically rich. No, you know, you first of all, you're in debt. First of all, you're taking debt. Yeah. You have a, a big opportunity. Second one, the, the second one is, is that you have to work in your business. I don't believe that. I don't mind. In fact, I coach franchisees. Most people make that mistake. They leave, don't miss this. They leave their corporate job and they take their 401k, then they buy a bigger job. That's counterintuitive. I didn't buy a job to work in it. I bought a, I bought, I bought a business to create opportunity for people to build it and get opportunity from. So most people, the mix known is that you, you know, you, you, you get it and then you just a boss. No, you're not working in the business. But what your job is to work on the business, marketing, strategy, planning, lease development. That's the misnomer. People think, well, you just get it and it happens. No, it's a lot of behind the scenes work that you got to do. Not So you might not see a person in their business. You shouldn't hire people to do that. But you should be working on your business most of the time. And people think they're going, okay, I want to buy a franchise so I can just be rich and do nothing. Nope. Keep your job, boo-boo. Sorry. That ain't what we do. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting. You have more of a chance of being the NBA, I guess, than being a franchise owner. Of McDonald's. Yeah, it's true. So, so that's the whole thing is that the, the chances of me making it to the NBA is greater than making it to become a McDonald's franchisee. But God, not me, but God, because my whole process was different. Normally it takes you. It's a, I, I've experienced it because I've had people come to my store and they call registered applicants. So they have a job. McDonald's tell you. Don't quit your job. You you become a registered applicant. And if you get approved to go to the next step and you have to work 25 hours a week in a store so you can learn the business. So, so and you got to keep your job to tell you because you ain't in yet. You got to look at people don't understand. It. It's not just you just pay the money. You got to learn it and learn it. And then you can go through. I saw people go through that whole process, 25 hours for two years. And they say, nope, not a good fit. But God gave me an opportunity that I never, I, I'm literally, I'm serving tables. And next thing you know, I'm in the corporate offices. And then God is powerful, powerful. Yes, he is. <laughs> and you were pretty young, um, right? I was, 30, I was 30, 32, 32 years old. Ray Kroc was a, a he sold um, a mixer that mixed six shakes at a time. He 55 years old when he went to San Bernardino, California, and saw McDonald Brothers had created this drive through And then he... Struck a deal with them to franchise it for him. Colonel Sanders was uh, was was sixty five years old. He was getting his Social Security check. He had a recipe, so he was got up every day, put his white suit and bow tie on, and went to these truck stops and sold his chicken. And look now, but I like being younger though, because you got a longer runway. Come on, somebody, you know you could enjoy it more. Uh, yeah, it's powerful. Awesome. And so, how long did you stay? Um, in that industry, um, uh, being the owner, I, I sold a franchise after twelve years. Okay, uh, twelve years. That's another strategy because as a franchisee, you sign a twenty-year life franchise agreement. That means that that's my asset. They can't take it from me unless I, of course, breach. But that's my asset. That's my. I own that right for twenty years. God blessed me just to really have a financial and a business mind. So after I got in and really learned the really infrastructure, learned the system, I started getting coaching. A executive coach and my coach taught me, he said, never fall in love with the bricks. That was a game changer. He said, you got to look at the numbers. And also when he told me in one session, he said, you know how you go to the amusement park and, you know, they have these roller coasters. They said they got well, the roller coaster always has these peaks and valleys, but every roller coaster has one that's really high. He so that to a bit. He said, so you, I want you to start looking at your bill like that, Ken. Your business is going to have peaks. You're going up, 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 up. He said, but when your business go to this peak, you know, you can't peak no more. So that's the time you got to exit. So I was blessed enough to, when I got my franchise agreement, I then started to work on my on my exit strategy. I, my plan was to sell it at, go in, jack the sales up, add value, sell it high, take the money and go flip it, doing something else. That was a strategy. But I stayed two extra years, but I still run that put that play. Took my two stores up to three. People always say it's so funny that the average volume in McDonald's back then was a uh, million dollars. Uh, my stores did three million dollars, both of them. And so they were very, very valuable. And so I knew that because I worked them. I, I, I'm very strategic and I worked the plan. So I waited until they went to three million dollars. And then I told my CPA to do a valuation on them. 
And when they came back and said what I can sell them for, I told them, let's flip them. I was done. I had learned, I became rookie of the year, outstanding restaurant every year, $50 million in revenue. Me, a black kid from Chicago, been stood over $50 million. So guess what? I couldn't learn nothing else. I learned this from Michael Jordan, the Oprah Winfrey taught me this. They said, you all, you want to leave at the top of your game. Most people stay in jobs and businesses too long. So you got to be strategic about it. You need to look at your analytics, look at your KPIs, understand the market, understand the trends, and make sure that you go into it with an exit strategy. And that's what I do now for a living. Now, guess what I do? I'm a bit, I'm a franchise coach. So now I help French people get into the franchise space, go through it, but most importantly, help the ones in it start their exit strategy because you can get stuck in the business. That ain't a good thing. And so I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to become a trifle McDonald's franchisee. That you go in my store, they dirty because I done made all the money. I No. So I left at the top of my game like Oprah and Michael. Come on, somebody. <laughs> guess, what, guess what? Think about it. Last week, did you hear Mark Cuban? Yes. Now, people, the people, it, it's so funny. I laugh and people, but why would he do that? Because that's people, they got a poverty mentality. But well, why would you cut it off? Because there's, it's levels to this. Yes. He ran, it's ran the course. He's going to stay there and just get money. You, look, when you, when you lose your passion or you've already hit all of your matrices, it's time to exit. But most people stay because what? They just think they made it. They made it. I'm good. I made it. No, you got to plan. Oh, could you get stuck in your business? I, I did not want to get stuck. So I exit after 12 years. And once again, people say, don't you regret that? Absolutely not. My speaking, my coaching, all that, my fee is based upon because I got that experience. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love like a, that. A coach, a, a, a player playing the NBA. Then you look up a few years down the road, they become a coach. or they're an exec Why? Because they had experience as a player and so now you can show people i always say never take a lesson from a coach who never played the game and so now i'm, I'm afforded the opportunity now to go still be in that space i'm still that front but i don't have that p l responsibility i don't have that that loan people pay me for my experience and my and my, my, my and my um and my knowledge and i absolutely love it I love that. I think there's such an importance to um, not becoming so attached that you don't know how to evolve and go where God wants you to go. When God told you, okay, time to move on and you're still hold on to it. So now you said you um, speak and uh, I mean, you uh, teach other franchisees how to, you know, do that. And I know you, you do speaking engagements. What else are you doing right now? Yeah, I do. That's it. I Well, I just purchased a, um, a, a credit repair. A yes, I saw that. Yes. So we don't do credit repair. We do credit management. And so I found that, you know, 80 percent of, of of our life, you know, is, is credit to every aspect. And what and think about it all through college, all through high school, Bethany Church, people don't teach financial literacy. And so most people are overextended. They house broke or go on and on. And they embarrassed to talk about credit. And what happened was, was that people would pay me good money. People, people would come pay me good money to work on their business and we would do a phenomenal business plan, put systems in process. And guess what? When it came time to make investments, they didn't have the money. So I decided to start to really educate people on their credit and it helped them repair their credit, understand their credit profile, which then will enable them to get funding so they can stop using their own money and use other people's money. And so what that is, so that's just a wraparound service I offer with my coaching clients. That makes sense? Yes, it does. Yeah, awesome. yeah, you know, yeah. Awesome. So, so it's just one stop shop. So we could, do, we could do, I do leadership training, credit repair for them, education for them. We can get them funding and we can help them uh, improve their systems within their business. And so it's just a really, really, it's, you know, it feels good to be able to add value to people, especially being a franchise, retired franchisee. I know that that's very, very important to have people around you that's going to add value. I love that. I love that. Well, I'm going to definitely make sure that um, at the end of this episode, we'll have all of your information now being like the credits. So people, so you guys can um, learn more about uh, Mr. Brown and how to um, get his services, whether it's a credit repair or you want him to come in and speak or anything like that. Uh, what I love so much about you is there are motivational speakers I listen to, but 
you know, at the end of the day, I know that their parents are millionaires. They grew up with that. And that's great. And that's wonderful. And I think that's awesome. But I think there's something to be said about someone who did not have that. It's easy to be encouraged and, and wanting to succeed when you're living comfortably, when everything is good, when you know that you won't ever be homeless, when you know the lights will never be off, when all your utilities and all that's taken care of. I think it's, it's another thing to be able to mentally um, have to press press through and persevere when things are not going well, when you don't know the next time you're going to have this food or, or that food. You really shared a lot about your faith already, but what's something that you can kind of end this on, like a note you can end this on for anybody who's watching, who who is struggling and who's feeling like, you know, they're a victim. They're feeling like the world's against them and they're trying to kind of come out of the, the pit of maybe depression and sadness and really want to go ahead and get on the path of not success, but on on the path <laughs> on the path to wealth and on the path to, to prosperity. Yeah. You know what I, I like to call it? Freedom. Freedom. People only, yes. People only want wealth. They want money so you can do what you want to do. So we like to say, so my, you know, one of my books is called Life. I teach life. You know what life is? Life is live in freedom every day. And said, Jesus saying, I came so you may have life. That's what he meant. Live in freedom every day. And so you ask the question, so how do you do that? First of all, you have, by, the first thing he has, you, you have to um, surrender, first of all. Period. Period, period, point blank. Surrender your business, your relationships, your finances, and you ask God. Like, remember Solomon? Remember what he said? I did this. So, Lord, don't give me money. See, people pray for money, opportunity. Lord, give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Give me understanding. And I ask for the one gangster part. I say, Lord, and give me more wisdom than my teachers. Woo, come on, somebody. That's good. That's good, yep. And then I want, I want to encourage you all. Guess what? I know this for a fact, and I want you to take, take, take this very seriously. God created us that everything that you need is not on the outside. It's in you. Mm. That's why my program is called Mind Your Business. It's your teaching. It's, it's, it's dual. It's mine here, but also going deeper. Mine is in here. We so busy looking out instead of looking in. Everything that we have is in there. Think about a seed. A seed. If I give you a pump, if I give you an apple seed, God created that seed with everything it needed in it. Yes. And all yes. you got to do, don't miss this. So you take that seed, you put it in some fertile ground. Woo, come on, somebody. So people, take yourself, take your time, your tools, your mind. Make sure you're in the right environment. Yeah. That makes sense? And the next thing you need is you need some sunlight. Make sure you surround yourself with people who are positive. They push you. They stretch you. They encourage you. They motivate you. But most importantly, they also challenge you. That makes sense? Yes. They put a demand on your potential. And then lastly, it needs water. And that's why most people don't grow because they always want sunshine. But that rain makes it grow too. That plain, that rain. That, and so just embrace the process. Don't overthink it. Surrender and know that the world makes way for the person who know where they're going. When you get clear and when you know where you want to go, you clear about it, your actions, your energy, your words, your environment. You see, look, I went to own my own restaurant. I went to school, got a degree in hotel restaurant management. I worked in other people's business. I knew what I wanted to do. I put on blinders. And also I want to say, what you focus on the longest will become your strongest. Stop looking at everybody else. Focus on you. I love what Jack, Michael Jackson said. He said, I'm looking at the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. Family, it's a perfect timing. I've been doing this for about 20 years. The process I'm gonna give to you, it served me very well. Right now is a perfect time. Before you do anything else, stop, drop, and do this. It's called Review Preview. I want you to look at the people, places, things, thoughts, words that you have in 2023. And today, look at them. Any thought, habit, word, action that don't add to your future, right? That either going is it the add or it needs to multiply your dream, your goals. You gotta take it away. Don't in 2023 because if you take the same mindset, same action, same habits, same people, because the law of nature says, guess what? You're gonna get the same results. Right. And I'll say the last thing is, don't be afraid to fail. People are so scared. Perfection is not real. Do it while you're scared. Done is better than perfect. 
Most people want to be perfect, Pollyanna, filters, all that. No, go raw, be real, authentic, stay focused, stay true to yourself. And once again, I'll end by saying the world makes way for the person who know where they're going. Get clear. And, and, and if you do, I'll see you on the other side of success. Come on, somebody. That's that's it. There's nothing more I need to say. You all, I encourage you. I'm going to make sure I post links. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, be sure to like and subscribe um, and share. But if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll have all the links in the description as well. I know you have a couple of books too. And um, I encourage you guys. Three books. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Awesome. I encourage you guys to um, order those too. Wow. This was just great. I was just taking it all in. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I know you guys are encouraged. I'm encouraged. This this was really, really awesome. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Brown. This, this was a pleasure for me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you. All right, you all. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Inspire with Carrie.